Hey everyone, this is Isaac Kotek here, aka Subaqueous, and I was a part of that great contest that Ableton did recently called Beat the Clock, in which you had 24 hours from when you downloaded the stems to when you had to turn them in. And the stems that they gave you were a collection of samples from three different artists. Put in my submission and thought it was a great place for me to explore some different techniques within Ableton and, and really be able to experience just using a set amount of samples and creating something totally new out of that. And along the way, I learned some really cool things. I did some really interesting techniques that I wanted to share with you and just give you a rundown of what my workflow was and what I was trying to do with the contest. So to start, we have right here is the No Such Thing a sample, the, the No Such Thing set. And I'll just play that real quick so you can get an idea of what the sounds were. So as you can see, it's uh, pretty cool. Great, there's lots of lots of things to play with there. Lots of thick structures and sounds. And there's somewhat of a, a cool kind of trippy uh, drum kit there. So these are basically the samples that I used in creating my own submission. I used most of these and then added a few other ones from the two other sets to create the new song. So I'm going to flip over to my live set. Let's just and show you what I did with that. So you can hear First, let's just play a little bit so you can hear where, where I took those samples. Now this was made with only using seven samples total. So now you get a taste of what it is. I'm just going to stop it and then go over the different techniques and things that I did. So I'm just going to start at the top. Yeah, I got it. I have a delay. That's what was making that little high sound. It would have keep feeding back until it got really loud. So I had to stop it there. So yeah, I'm going to start at the top and just go down the different elements that I used. So first of all, the bass. Now in this bass, what I did is I took the sample that you found from No Such Thing. Let me find it right here, his bass line, which is pretty much just a straight, you can kind of see there's where the note was, there's the next note. And I just spliced that up and created an instrument out of it. So here's that instrument. And what I did is I just took the sample and made it fade in and out a lot to give it a as continuous sound as possible. Let me just highlight that. So what you're going to notice is I also have just the regular bass line, and then I have a what I call top bass. And in the top bass, I just add a little saturation and EQing, and basically delay to create a little bit more harmonics, a little bit thickness to it. So without it, you notice it's really deep, but that added a nice harmonic. And then when I get this kind of, kind of wobbling sound, what that is is I'm just changing the EQ here. 
on just the top base. The regular base is just as a sub, and then this is creating that like top end. That way I took a basic sample and turned it into a much richer and more ability for me to play with it. So then with the kick and the rest of the drums, what I did is I took those original samples, let's go back here and solo the drums. What I did is I just spliced up these drums into each element and created a brand new instrument rack. And here's this instrument rack. So I have my hats, clap, and my kick. And what I pretty much did is just spliced them and added a little EQing on each of these different elements. Let's see, so there's the EQ. And here's like a final EQ on this particular channel, which is just my kick to kind of give the EQ on that kick quite a, quite a bit more. So here's my sub, my sub kick, which is like a super compressed low kick, and then more of a high kick that I created. And you'll see, it goes through this final EQ and then that's done. That way, in creating my own instrument rack, I'm able to really control it, completely rewrite what the drum pattern was. Uh, I kind of kept the similar kick because I really liked the hip hop feel. I wanted to be true to some of the sounds, some of the concepts that those samples had, but totally changed, especially the high a hi-hat rhythm. So let's move down and look into that. So here's the hats. On this first hat, it's just kind of a fill hat. Let's zoom in so you can see the MIDI a little bit more. So the hat's going there. And then it's also being sent through a return track, which I'll go through more towards the end. Here's the main hat rhythm. I actually decided to use a Latin rhythm, so it has much more swing. And then this third one is more of a straight shaker hat rhythm. So yeah, that's how I did my drums, is by splicing them up into a drum kit, which I can then program through MIDI. Now going down, we have the Vox. This is the one of the samples that was found no such thing. And what I did is I took the sample, reversed it, then I ran it through reverb, froze it, and then reversed it again to give it that kind of preverb sound. And it has a really nice ending reverb as well. You also notice on this track that it's going through a sidechain compression of the kick to just give it a little bit more breath. Here's one of the melodies from No Such Thing. So what I did here is I actually, let me show you through the transpose. I must have froze it. But at one point, what I did, there was a note in here that I didn't particularly like. So I transposed it by choosing transpose, taking that section and just bringing it down, something like that. The reason I did that is because I actually turned the song, which was in a, uh, F minor, I believe. And I took the song and put it into F blues scale because I really like the blues. And to do that, I had to change a few notes just slightly to keep it within the scale. And I also kind of changed the timing of this sample a little bit. But I kept the, the overall sound because I really like that quality.
Now looking at this next little melodic thing. Here is a really cool thing. What I did is I took this sample and using the transient settings down here, if you take it, if you warp it with beat and you have it on transient, meaning it looks at every hit, and then you set this to absolutely low, what that means is it'll notice the hit and then this is the level in which it volumes fade after. So by putting this all the way down, what I did is I created just little teeny stabs. Then after I did that, I put it through a simple ping pong delay to give it this nice little accent. And that way when I layer it with this, just kind of gives it a nice little feel. Now staying in that vein, we'll move over to this next one, which is also that same sample, except for I completely washed it out and made it more into an ambient track to just give it a little bit more, uh, a little more harmonics. And I have this little washed out effect chain there, and a few other effects to just kind of give it a little breath. Mainly it's done through reverb. And then I put a sidechain compression on it to just give it a nice uh, kind of breath with the kick. And then EQ. You'll notice each one of these is EQ'd in a specific way to make sure that they're not overlapping each other or any frequency is particularly loud. So that's how I did that melody. And now we're going to move down into this. Uh, this is only this next channel is actually the fourth the fourth sample. So at this point I've only had four samples that I've changed, turned into instruments or or whatever else. This I actually took from the M83 track. There was a little guitar sound that I I chopped and turned into an instrument as well. So let's look at it. I put it into the sampler, and it's right there. So I turned it into this new instrument in which I also have it ran through an amp rack and a saturator to just give it a little more grit. So then the next sample is very similar. I created a new instrument so that I could write out new melodies. And this, I was actually really surprised at, is I just took that same exact bass instrument that I created earlier. And I noticed that when I was playing it high, it sounded a lot like a Rhodes. And it gave a really cool character. So as you can see, it, it's kind of, kind of this bell type Rhodes sound. Pretty much unchanged. I just took it and then put an EQ on it and called it good. Moving on to this next one it was another Vox track. This one was taken from the Junior Boys. And I really spliced. So that's the overall sample right here. I just took a teeny little bit out of it. You notice I washed it out with a lot of reverb, a lot of delay to give it just a really breathy sound. And uh, this technique here is pretty interesting. Sometimes when I find a sound doesn't quite have the harmonics that I'm looking for, I'll run it through an EQ in which I overpronounce the frequencies found in a specific uh, note to give it that, that quality. So in this case, I just EQ'd it to be an F so that when it ran through all these reverbs and all the rest of my effect chain, it really has an F uh, note sound to it, even though originally it was not an F. That's a really cool technique in processing ambient or, or sounds that you're going to totally re-sculpture. So in this one, it has a lot of that reverb sound to it, right? And the second one down is just more of the dry. 
and I put I pan that slightly differently to just give it a little little more spatial interest. Now I'll move down to the last, which is just a simple riser. And I did this just to kind of create rising and inform inform the listener that something's about to happen. And what I did is similar to what I did before is I took a a sample and I'm just playing it straight and then I'm reversing it towards the end to give it this kind of kind of ending delay sound to it. Now, the next really important thing that made this track what it is is here I'll start it over here. I'll just turn this down so we can hear a little bit. But you notice all these kind of trippy delay sounds going on. None of those were found in the sample. But what they were... is I created a return track in which I have all these different settings. So I have in this first return track, I have a uh, reverb and the second one I have a reverb and a little bit more like spatial effect and these last two are my dub delay so dub delay is taking an incoming signal running it through the delay in which it creates right now it's a 4-3 delay and then I have an EQ here, which is ever changing. I did that by hand with a MIDI controller. And then this signal, this whole chain is then over here. You'll see in the return track is actually returning back onto itself. So by taking the signal and putting it back into itself, it it'll just continually feed back. And then with that EQing going back and forth, it creates really trippy, cool harmonics, very full. And it's kind of a the basics of a lot of dub tracks is having just endless delay that's moving and morphing, creating really trippy sounds that are it's kind of like a fractal feeding on itself continuously. You have to be really, really aware that if you go a little bit over the line, it's gonna feed back instantly and create an incredible amount of noise. So with just the right touch, you can create really awesome layering. And then this second delay is very similar, except for I'm using it through an auto filter and a ping pong. So this one, I wasn't as much uh, affecting the EQ. It was just the light sending of a delay at a little different timing. It's just a, a three ping pong. That way I could maybe send one element of the drums to this specific delay. And then the master delay would be more the melody. So in that way, I could take all these different samples and really glue them together by creating this trippy delays that were going in and out to really fill up the track. So yeah, to look at this real quick again, what I did is I just took every sample from pretty much uh, the very few samples they gave in the live set, chopped them up into new instruments, maybe added different layers on top of themselves to make it a little bit more harmonically different. Chopped up drum patterns, drum instruments. Took samples, repitched them a little bit, make them fit the scale I was working in. I was working in blues, which gives it a very unique feel. And then just chopped them up, laid out the composition, called it good. I'd say in making this, most of my time was actually used in creating new instruments from the samples because once that was done I could creatively do whatever I wanted as compared to trying to work within the constructs of the samples I could just really feel free to do whatever I wanted so yeah that's my uh that's my song for beat the clock and in this video there's going to be a link to where the full song is so you can listen to it as well as if you like this video learn some cool stuff uh, vote for me on the track. That'd be awesome. And hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. <laughs>